telling you, they're really doing well. All if right. you ever, if you ever hear what you manage to do, as a sister, you're doing better than me. Yes. <laughs> good, good. Yes, good. she's doing all right. Praise all God. Right. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, let me say welcome to everybody. Um, and Pastor, I just want yes. to mention that I have a guest on, Lorna Squire. I see that she's on already. Hi, Sister Lorna, how are you doing? New. Um, let me see if I can unmute you. Oh, no, I'm not able to. Brother Marvin? Um, Sister Lorna, uh, yes, just unmute yourself. How are you? Good to have you. I'm doing good. I'm doing good, Pastor. Good, wonderful. <laughs> nice to have you on this Thank evening. Thank you. Thank you. All right, all right. Welcome also to Roxanne. I see Roxanne on. And Sister Brown, as usual. Sister Brown, how are you doing? Sister Marcia. I'm doing fine. Thank you. All right, Sister Marcia. Um, please check your email by tomorrow. I'm going to be sending the program to you. <clears throat> okay, right, I will. I will. All Thank right. you. Good, good. And we have Brother Marvin on, um, standing by to lead out in this evening's uh, program. Welcome, Sister Claudine is coming on. And just welcome everybody. We are going to begin um, now. We're going to start with prayer. Sister Lee, could we uh, could I ask you to lead us in prayer, please, Sister Lee? Are you? Uh, am I clearly? I was just trying to change. My yes, I'm here. Is it clear? I'm hearing you, yes. You're okay, hearing me. Okay, let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this opportunity that we can meet in this fashion yes. to study your word. I pray, Lord, that you will be with each and every one of us that's on this call now. I pray that you will be with the speaker, the presenter, that he will come through with clarity and that we will understand. I pray that you will open up our understanding that we will be able to follow and i pray lord and ask that each one of us will receive a special blessing in jesus name i pray amen 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 um usually we would have sister debbie and the others a few others from aruba on but uh, at this time, I'm, I think Sister Debbie is by the Hookers family who have lost a loved one there, sharing condolences. So we pray for them as usual in Aruba. All right, welcome again. And we're gonna get going by singing our hymn for tonight. When we walk uh, with the Lord in the light of his word, trust and obey. I'm gonna ask you to sing along. With your mics muted, I'll put the music and words on screen so we can follow. All right, here we go. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on us. with us still and with all who will trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey not a burden we bear not a sorrow we share but our toil he doth richly Blessed if we trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. But we never. 
never can prove the delights of his love until on the altar we lay for the favor he shows for the joy he bestows are for them who will trust and obey trust and obey for there's no two persons there on YouTube. I think one of those persons may be Sister Lisa, who is currently uh, maybe at work and listening in, tuning in. Sister Lisa, Sister Lo, uh, whoever else is joining on YouTube, welcome. And may this evening's program be a blessing to you as well. All right, Brother Marvin, are you ready? Whenever you are, Pastor. All right. So here we go, Brother Marvin. It's your time. <laughs> okay. Uh, good night, one and all again. Um, we were... Good night. Missing for a few weeks, we did not have any study. My apology for that. So good night, those on Zoom and those on YouTube. But before we go in again, good night and welcome one and all um, to our Wednesday night study. We'll be looking at an interesting topic. Um, but before I introduce the topic, um, please, Bow your heads with me in prayer. Oh, Father and our God, again, we come giving you thanks for your loving kindness and your tender mercies towards us. Thank you, Lord, for sparing us. Thank you, Lord, that we again can open your words. We pray as we open your words, your Holy Spirit will give us enlightenment. We pray, Lord, as these enlightenment comes, when needed, you will bring back whatever we are going to study to our memory. And Lord, in our deliberation here tonight, we pray and ask that your Holy Spirit bring back that which we have studied. Cleanse us from every single thing that defiles and present us clean and holy, we pray. May your Holy Spirit be with us, remain with us, and abide with us, we pray. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 We're going to look at an interesting study. It is very basic and simple. Just the door, the topic of a door. And we're going to see a lot of things, a lot of things which are involved in this door. Um, because there are many persons who believe, in fact, that there is no such thing as an open or a shut door. So with that, now we're just going to look at them um, and do a basic study and as it develops, we are going to see how far this lesson or this study is going to take us. I don't think I'll be able to finish tonight, but at least we'll have a strong hold or understanding of the topic presented. I just want to ask how many of us are, are familiar? Um, you can open your mic and speak. 
Um, we don't want this to be a monologue. We crave your participation. So we're expecting a dialogue. Um, how many of us are familiar or remembers um, the rules that we work, we, uh, we always go by in our study? How many of us remember those rules? Can anyone at least give three or four of the rules? Anyone remember? Rule number, Rule number one. one. Can you repeat, please? I heard someone said something, but I didn't hear clear enough, clearly. I would say rule number four. Rule number four, to understand doctrine, bring all the scriptures doctrine. together. Yes. Bring all the scriptures together and the subject you wish to know. Then let every word have its proper influence. And if you can form your theory without a contradiction, you cannot be in error. Amen, all Sister right. Brown. That's a good one. Any others? You will remember the rules. Every, um, rule number one, every word must have its proper meaning. Rule number one, every word must have its proper bearing on the subject presented in the Bible. That's rule number one. So we have rule one and four thus far. I'll give somebody else a chance. Remember the 14 rules. There are 14 of them. For those new and are on for the very first time, we can send a copy of these rules to you later on. And remember, these rules are built upon Isaiah 28, which we explore the issues line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. Um, rule number three, um, nothing, there you go, nothing, um, nothing revealed in scripture can, can or will be, will be hid from those who, who ask faith in faith. Not, Not wavering. wavering. Amen. Any other? Yes. One more and then I'm through. Um, let's see. Nobody else remember? The one I love most is rule number five. No. And I'll read it for you all. It says, scripture must be its own expositor. Since it is a rule of itself. If I depend on a teacher to expound it to me and he should guess at its meaning or desire to have it so on account of his sectarian creed or to be, or to be taught wise, then his guessing, desire, creed, or wisdom is my rule and not the Bible. And here, when we are studying the Bible, we want what God is saying to us from his word. We don't want opinion. We want God's word to us. We don't want, want what a person thinks. We don't want what a person guess or to have it so on what the, his church or our church or whatever church teaches. We want what the Bible clearly teaches. Amen. Amen. Are you hearing me clearly? I am. You are. All right. So let us look, look at the study now. Turn our Bibles to Revelation 3 and verse 8. Revelation 3 and verse 8. And I found it say amen. 
Amen. Amen. It says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee a what? An open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast little strength, and hast kept my words, and hast not denied my name. But it's the first part I'm interested in, Revelation 3 and verse 8. Say, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. So we want to explore what this door is like. So I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to give you a layout of the sanctuary. And then I'm going to ask a few questions. I'm going to share my screen now. Are you seeing it? Yes. No. Seeing it clearly now? This is an outlay of the sanctuary, the earth, Moses Tabernacle. Right, this is how it looks, and you have the these are the various tribes that had their encampment around the tabernacle. So these are the 12 tribe of Israel. This is the tabernacle here now. So we see the courtyard. Are you seeing my mouse cursor here? Yes. You have the lava here. You have the pillars here right around. Right, you have the linen hanging, you have the altar of burnt offerings, which is right here. And you have something interesting here, the gate, right? And note right here as well where my cursor is, right at these hangings, we're going to um, look at it afterwards, right? So let me end sharing now, and I'll get back to this later on. So, an open and shut door. Let me ask you the question, what is the function of a door? Uh, what are the functions that we can list of a door? To enter and exit. To enter and to exit. Yes, that is very good. What else? To secure somewhere. To secure. Yes. Privacy. Pardon me? Privacy. Privacy, yes. Show what different else? show different compartments. To show different compartments, yes. Open or close two different compartments. Yes. So all these are functions and a door also do what deny access right yes it gives and denies access so let us look now at acts 12 and verse 13 and see what else a door does and we're going to see it is used in connection with something else Acts 12 and verse 13. Verse you have found the same, man? Verse 13. Yes, Acts 12 and verse 13. On the screen. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to her named Rhoda. Yes. Pastor, help mm -hmm. me understand this. How is it that Peter is going to knock at the door of a gate? What is the difference between a door and a gate? Um, 
Mm. To knock at the door of a gate. Well, it, it, it might suggest that the gate is a bigger entrance area with a smaller entrance area at the door. At the door. That's the, picture. that's the picture that is in my mind. That is the picture that is in your mind. Uh -huh. Interesting. I'm going to share just a, 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 a picture that comes to mind as well. And you look at it and tell me what you see. What, what are your thoughts? Before we actually get down in the scriptures again. I'm going to share my screen now. What comes to mind when you look at this now? Burglar bar, man. <laughs> what is it a burglar bar? Hmm? Is it a burglar bar? Well, the gate is a burglar bar and the door is bored. <laughs> and the door is bored. Mm. All right. I just thought that interesting to have a look at that. Could you think that you can see through a gate? Sister Brown. A door? Sister Brown. What? The fact that you have said that, you have opened up for me now something that I was looking at as it relates to you can see through a gate, but you cannot see through a door. Could be. But let us, as we look through this study, we're going to see if, if that can actually fit in. Fit in. All right? So let us continue now. Did, did I stop sharing my screen? Yes, I did. Now, turn our Bibles to John 10. And we're going to, we'll be reading from 6 to 10. So John 10. Okay. 6 to 10. John 10, 6 to 10. 6 to 10 says, This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were, which they were, which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Mm -hmm. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But, that, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved mm -hmm. and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Abundantly. Amen. Thank you very much. So we see here that Christ clearly state that he is the door. And if any man enter by him, the same shall be saved. All right. We're going to look at the tabernacle of the sanctuary now and see how this ties in. Exodus 29 and verse 4. Exodus 29 and verse 4. Remember, Jesus says that he is the door. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. Yes. And Aaron and his sons, thou shalt bring unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and shall wash them with water. Water. So we wow. see here that at the tabernacle of the congregation, there is a door. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to share my screen now. And we're going to have a look at this. So this is where he was brought to and he was washed right here at this brazen liver. Liver right here. Right? So this, this is where Aaron washed his sons. And right here would be the door of entering to the holy place. 
We're just setting the stages here now. Let me just stop sharing again. Let us find this now and prove this for ourselves. Exodus 38 and verse 8. And to see how this lava of brass is. Exodus 38 and verse 8. Exodus 38. And we're looking for verse 8. And he made the lava of brass and the foot of it of brass of the looking of the looking glasses of the women assembling, which assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So it is right at the door. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see something else now. I'm going to share screen again. And we're going to look at something now. So this is the lava here where Aaron washed his sons. And it is before the door of the congregation, which would be right here, right? But interestingly, when you look right here, what is it that is right here? Gate. The gate. So from the gate, you have, you move on to the, you can pass the altar of burnt offerings. You're going to go to the lava and from the lava you're, go, you're going to go into the holy place. At the holy place, there is a door. Let me give you another view. So you have a door here again in the most holy place, separating the holy from the most holy. And you have another door here separating the courtyard from the holy place. So we're going to look at the gate, door, and the veil. So we have here the gate that leads you into the sanctuary. Into and the we courtyard. have the into first, the courtyard. the courtyard, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And then it is now the first veil that separates, as we have said before, between the holy and the most holy. Right, so the first veil is still the door. The second veil is also a door that goes into the most holy. I'm gonna stop sharing now and we're going to look some more at this study. So let us prove um, that the gate is in where it, we said it is. Let us turn our Bibles to Exodus 27 and we're going to read from 16 to 19. <laughs> 16 to 19. Yes. And for the gate of the court shall be a hanging of 20 cubits of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen wrought with needlework and their pillars shall be four and their sockets four. All the pillars round about the court shall be filleted with silver. Their hooks shall be of silver and their sockets of brass. Length of the court shall be in hundred cubits and the breadth 50 everywhere and the height five cubits of fine twined linen and their sockets of brass. Where do I so, go? Yes, you can stop there. So okay. we clearly see that the gate is in the outer court. Mm -hmm. All right? We established that. Let us look and see the door to the holy place now. Exodus 26, 36 to 37. Exodus 26. 
36 and 37? Yes. And thou shalt make an hanging for the door of the tent of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen wrought with needlework. And thou shalt make for the hanging five pillars of shittim wood and overlay them with gold and their hooks shall be of gold. And thou shalt cast five sockets of brass for them. For them. Um, there are some other texts that I can give you that would complement this. And you will find that also in Exodus 36, 37 to 38. Now let us look at the Holy of Holies to see if there is a door there. The Holy of Holies, and you find this now in Exodus 26, and we're going to read from 31 to 33. Exodus 26, 31 to 33. And thou shalt make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen of cunning work. With cherubims shall it be made. And thou shalt hang it upon four pillars of shittim wood overlaid with gold. Their hooks shall be of gold upon the four sockets of silver. And thou shalt hang up the veil under the tatches that thou mayest bring in thither within the veil, the ark of the testimony. And the veil shall divide unto you between holy place and the most holy. Most holy place. Now, this, remember the text that we have opened up with, right? Who remember the text that we have opened up with? The door. Revelation 3. Revelation 3 and verse 8 says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it. Amen? Mm -hmm. No man can shut this door. All right, let us continue to explore now. Uh, let us turn our Bibles to Luke. Before that, let us look at some examples and again and see how else an open door is presented. And to see how oh, God has always been leading his people. Let us turn our Bibles to Colossians 4 and verse 3. Colossians 4 and verse 3. Withal, praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bond. So it is God who opens opportunity, opportunities for us to give utterance of his words. Right? We are not the one who does it. It's God who does it. And when he does it, he places us in position that we may speak the mysteries of Christ. Right? So no matter what man does to us in trying to prevent Christ's words from going forward, Christ opened up for us an opportunity for such utterance. He opens up a door. And no matter what man does, he cannot close that door. Remember the promise in Revelation 3 and verse 8. He presents before us an open door and no man can shut it. Second Corinthians now, 2 and verse 12. 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 12. Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened unto me of the Lord. So who opened up the door? We see Christ here opens up the door. We're going to take it on a deeper level now. Let us turn our Bibles again now to Luke 13, 25 to 28. Luke 13, 25 to 28.
when once the master of the house is risen and hath shut to the door and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. Then shall ye begin to say, we have eaten and drunk in thy presence and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping, gnashing of, the of teeth, when ye shall see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves thrust out. Now, is there a closed door here? No. You don't see a closed door here. What happened, he said, when, when once the master of the house is risen up and at what? Shut, oh, the, shut door. the door. Yes. So if, and this is concerning salvation. So we see here in this parable that a door is shut and those to whom the door was shut on, they start asking some questions. Right after the declaration is made, I know you not whence ye are. Watch the declaration now. Then shall he begin to say, we have eaten and drunk in thy presence and thou hast taught in the streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not. Whence ye are, depart from me. The door is shut. They were not given entrance. And we see here that the entrance here is in the kingdom of God. So the door is shut. That means they don't have access to it. Amen. So Amen. is there a shut door presented here? Obviously. Yes. yes. Let us continue to look at the door of faith and hope. And we're going to summarize and show all of these things that there, there is indeed an open door as well as a closed door. Acts 14, 27. And when they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. So we see here that God himself opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. The Gentiles were seen as dogs and the Jews think that they had the power to close the doors to the Gentiles. But we see how God says that he had opened the door of faith unto them. Let us continue to look. Isaiah 2 and verse 15. Isaiah? Isaiah. Hosea. Hosea 2. And verse 15, you said? Mm-hmm. All right, verse 15 of Hosea 2. And I will give her her vineyards from thence, and the valley of Achor for a door of hope. For a door of what? Hope. A door of hope. Just in the interest of time, I'm just going to ask you to skip that one pastor. Go now to 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 8. So we see a door of hope. And if a door is shut, if the door of hope is shut, it means therefore one has no hope. Amen? So on the flip side of the door of hope being open, it means that a door is shut. 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 8. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. Is it 1 Corinthians or 2 you need? 1 Corinthians 16 verse 8. Continue to verse 9. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. So we see here at Pentecost, Christ opened up 
for Paul where he could be effective in proclaiming the gospel. So remember, there were great persecutions at this time facing the church, but God had opened up a door here that Paul would be able to preach. Now let us look at Revelation 3 and verse 20. And we're going to see how an open door concept as well as a closed door concept is going to come out here. Revelation 3 and verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if he's standing at the door and knock, it means that he's not inside, right? Mm -hmm. He would be on the outside, wanting an entry. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and, he, uh, and will sup with him and he with me. All right. We're going to just take a little um, break now and we're going to look and to see how is this happening, right? He says, if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. We're going to look and see how this is played out now. Turn the Bibles again to John 14, 23 to 26. John 3, 24. John, John 14, 23 to 26. So if one doesn't open the door, eventually something is going to happen. 23 to 26. Yes. Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So we see here that Christ and the father is going to come. Continue. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the, the Comforter, Father which is sent, what? Which is who? The Holy Ghost. The Comforter, which is who? The Holy Ghost. Whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye would rejoice. Because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. Yes. yes. All right. So we see here in verse 26, it says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you. So the Comforter is the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4 and verse 30. Verse 30. Mm -hmm. Right. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. So we see here that the comfort of the Holy Spirit is the one, the one who seals. Right? So and it, we are cautioned here that we should grieve not the Holy Spirit. Right? Let us look at Matthew 12, 31 now. Matthew 12, 31. And then Romans 8 and verse 9. Matthew 12, 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. 
So it's very clear. So the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, if we blaspheme against him, right? None, none of our sins will be forgiven. Romans 8 and verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. He is what? None of his. And if he's none of his, if we look at the context here in Revelation 3 verse 20, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will what? Hear. So one has to hear the voice of God and open up your heart to accept Christ. If you don't accept Christ here, eventually you're going to end up committing the unpardonable sin. You're going to blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. And if you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, you are none of his, right? Now I just put that in so that we can get a good understanding as to what the door, a door is and see how we can relate to it in terms of the open and closed door as it relates to salvation, right? So the purpose of a door is an opening or a passage into. It is the means by which a person's person enter to gain an influence. It's an avenue, a passage, a mean of approach or access. So that is what the function of a door is, right? With that said, we're going to look at something very interesting and we're going to close off at this one. So we have looked at the door. We're going to see something very interesting here. Turn your Bibles now to Genesis 6, reading verse 3 and 13. Genesis 6, verse 3 and 30. three mm -hmm. and the Lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he is also flesh for that he also is flesh yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years so we see here that God is saying that his spirit shall not always strive with men and we have read that if you re one reaches a point when they blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. And we see when one blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, none of his sins can be forgiven. And if one sins cannot be forgiven, it means therefore the door of salvation is closed for that person. Am I right? Mm. All right. Revelation, Genesis 6, same way, just to verse 13 now, um, Pastor. And God Genesis said unto 6, Noah, 13. Mm -hmm. God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So we see here that they are going to be destroyed. And how is God going to destroy men off the face of the earth? Chapter 7, O oh Pastor, verse 1 and 16. Verse 1 and 16 says, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. And verse 16 says, And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. So was there a closed door in the days of Noah? Yes. So yeah. if there was a closed door, those to whom the door was closed on, were they saved or were they lost? Lost. They were lost. So... What, what I have done so far is try to remove 
the argument that people says that there is no such teaching as a shut door. So next week, when we come back, we're going to look at a shut door in Abraham's day, in Christ's day, in Jerusalem, and we're going to have a look also at the five wise and the five foolish, the shut door message. So any questions or comment that anyone want to make on this study as to the door? No questions, no comments. Seems like it's clear, brother. <laughs> All right. All right, if it's clear and there's no question, no comment, I guess, um, Pastor, I turn over back to you now. All right. Thank you so much, Brother Marvin. Interesting um, study and the concept of the shut door. And uh, uh, it, one thing is clear is that those who are of the opinion that there's no such concept in scriptures, uh, the word of God has nullified that idea because we have run through and to and, to and fro throughout the scriptures and we have seen quite a number of instances of that coming to the fore. So we want to thank you, Brother Marvin, for leading out, leading out in our study tonight. And I want to thank again those who have joined both on Zoom and uh, YouTube. We're going to close off with prayer and then we say ta-ta for tonight. All right, let us pray. Father in heaven, we are truly grateful that it is not in the hand of man to shut the door of hope or faith or opportunity that you have opened. And any door that you shut, no man can open. We thank you for the study tonight and we thank and we look forward to next week when we shall continue the subject. I pray that you will give us a good night's rest. You'll bless our presenter and every student who studied tonight. Lord, we ask your forgiveness of our sins one more time. We will blot out our transgressions, cover us in your righteousness, and fill us with your Holy Spirit, whereby we are sealed to the day of redemption. Thank you for hearing us tonight. Bless those who are on YouTube as well. And we pray that as we look to you, you will supply our needs according to your riches in glory. Thank you for hearing us and bless us to this end, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good night. Good night. Good night. All right, everybody. It was lovely studying with you again. Have a wonderful rest of the week. Looking forward to seeing you on Friday night again. And uh, hopefully, by God's grace, on Sabbath, we will be together again. Looking forward to see everybody. God bless you. Oh,